All right, good day, everyone. Um, this is the day the Lord has made. Oh, let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a privilege to meet with you in this capacity once more and just give um, God honor, um, glory, and praise. Uh, we are um, very thankful to him for um, giving us life, for giving us health, for giving us breath, everything that we need. And so before we um, go any further, let us uh, go before him right now and ask him to, to guide our proceedings this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor your great name. We give you thanks. We give you praise because you are our loving God. You are a faithful God. And Father, your word promises that no good thing will you withhold from us when we walk uprightly. Father, we thank you that you've loved us with an everlasting love. And I pray, God, that tonight as we, we um, go into this session, that you'll go before us. I pray that you'll speak clarity to us. Father, we speak about entrepreneurship and business and all that that entails. Father, we pray that uh, through this, each of us would see beyond the natural words. I pray that we, we will be challenged. There are some of us whom you've called to, to um, be full-time employees, and that's great. Some of us you've called to be entrepreneurs, to be business owners, and that's great. Some of us you've called to, to do both simultaneously. Father, whatever it is, our prayer is that each of us would just listen to you and just, just um, listen to, to your guidance and just go um, just go in the direction that you lead us. I pray that none of us would leave this earth without having accomplished the purpose for which um, we have been sent here. So God, go before us, speak to us, challenge us, challenge our hearts tonight. And may the words of our mouths, may patience and fall for our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right. Good day again, everyone. All right. We welcome you on, on behalf of our church, Word Life Christian Fellowship. There's our um, uh, the way to contact us. There's a telephone number, website, and the email address. Let me just give um, God thanks for that, for, for being able to um, meet with you in, in this capacity and be able to co contact uh, and connect with you as time goes on. The vision of our church is changing our world with the word. Our mission statement says that we, we as a church exist to equip people with the transformative word of God and the tools to empower them to embrace and fulfill their divinely ordained purpose. Now that's a tall order, but we've been prepared for such a time as this. And we just believe that in God's goodness, he will accomplish that which he has started in us. And he will do great works on our behalf. And in his name, we shall accomplish great tasks. All right, tonight we'll look at a concept called the, the Christian entrepreneur doing business God's way. And this is a, something that's been near and dear to my heart. It was probably about oh, five or six years ago that this thought um, first came to me to do a seminar on this, this subject matter. This is something that is a part of my life, you know, what that entails. I remember years ago when I first sent a call from God, one of my questions to him was, is there a place in the world for God's people, right? Is there a place in the world for God's people? Because, you know, in the business world, they say it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and there you're going into, into the shark tank. But is there a way to be a believer and successful as you, as you go about um, serving God, you know, adhering to princi principles that we see in the Bible and not you know, backstabbing, not, you know, seeking one owns, one's own self-interest. Is there a way to, to succeed? Um, or is that type of, if that, is that something that only um, is for the non-believer and Christians are just relegated to being subservient? And perhaps maybe we could, you know, go into the church, go in, into full-time ministry, but out there in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of the business world, we cannot be successful. Well, this is something that I've pondered for many a year. And you know, time has taught me well that you can be a believer. You can ad adhere to strict Christian principles, biblical principles, and be successful and, and be blessed by God in the process. And so I'd like to kind of 
challenge, not me, but the Spirit of God, I believe, would like to challenge our thought process as it relates to Christianity and, and being an entrepreneur and all that that might entail. And before I go any further, I'd, I'd also say to us that there, there's, you know, perhaps you're here and you may not have, may not sense the call to be an, an entrepreneur, but you know, you're, you're either you're a part of our church or you've been invited by someone and you just decide to, you, you may as well just you know, click on the link and, and just and be, and come be a part of it. I, you know, this, this will be, we're speaking about entrepreneur tonight, but and you can make a note of this if you're a note taker. And, and, the, here, and here it goes. The principles of success are universal. The principles of success are universal. So we could be doing a seminar on how to be a, a successful athlete, or we could be doing a seminar how to be a su successful medical doctor. How we could, uh, and it's just a myriad of, of possible um, scenarios. The principles of which we will speak are universal. This, in this particular context, they're more geared towards the whole entrepreneurial thing, but know that this, these principles are godly and they are universal and they can help you to be successful in any particular area or arena of life. Okay, now, as we're, we're sharing tonight, I, I encourage you to utilize uh, some of the Zoom features. In Zoom, we have the chat. We also have the raise hand feature. And so if you have a particular questions that you'd like to pose, you can put them in the chat or you can use the raise hand feature, or you can simply, when, they, uh, when, when I'm not sharing a PowerPoint, you can simply um, you know, raise your hand and I'll, I'd love to, 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 to um, address your particular inquiry. All right, so before we go any further, there's, uh, what I'd like to do as we get started in such a session is to find out from those who are, who are here, just give you the opportunity to say you know, what you're looking to get out of this particular session. So um, you don't have to answer, but if there's something particular that you look to get out of this particular session, um, I, I would like to ensure that we get to it. And by the way, this particular topic, we're, we're doing it this month as well as next month, because I believe it's so far reaching, it's so broad. And it's, I don't, I don't think we'll do it justice in one session. So without um, saying anything further, does anyone have anything in particular as to what you may like to get out of tonight's session? All right. Just know that as we as we proceed, you're you're free to to um to inquire. Now, Greenwood, I'm not sure if I have met you or not. And so welcome. I think the other names here I'm I'm somewhat familiar with, but I'm just gonna do a brief introduction of myself. My name is Roger Walters. I have the privilege of functioning in the capacity of the, the pastoral office in this in this church. And my, my uh, professional background is accounting. I'm a certified public accountant. Um, but I, I, I've often said, and I've been an, an accountant for 30 years. I've often said, however, that if I go to my grave, having been the most the most skilled accountant who ever lived. If that if that were to happen, if I go to my grave having been the most skilled accountant that ever lived, then my life would have been a miserable failure because I seek not to be the most skilled accountant that ever lived. I want to be highly skilled in that regard, but I my desire is to be a man of God, one who gets to serve in multiple multiple capacities. And he, God is faithful, and I know that um, he he opens doors for each of us. I'm um, without. I won't go much much further into this. I know this is recorded it's, it's on on the internet as well, and others may come across the video. But I think most of everyone here may know um, who who I am. So I'm not going to spend um, any, any more time on that. But welcome to each of you, and I pray that tonight we'll have a a wonderful time. 
I'm also very cognizant of the fact that you know, some of what we'll speak about tonight might be new to some of us. And I've been, I've had discussions after some of our sessions where it's been said that there's like sometimes a lot of information or maybe even too much information. I will speak as much as um, as needed, but if no, if there's no interaction, I'm going to assume that you get things and that, and then I'm just going to just move on. So if I'm going too fast or anything, please, this, the purpose for which we're gathered here is for us to make it um, interactive and, and more important and for you to leave each session, leave the session. Okay. So without further ado, you're calling. The first thing I'd like for us to consider, and this is this is a part that we where I say that this is not simply about um, being an, an entrepreneur; it's being just about being a child of God. I think quite often we speak about someone who is called, called of God, someone who is called um, to serve the Lord. We think of someone called from the everyday life the hustle and bustle of it all, pursuing their own life. And like the apostle Paul, or like Saint Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. And he, the Lord called him and he, he just redirected his life altogether. And so we think of a pastor being called by God. But guess what? If you're a child of God and you're called to be an entrepreneur, you're also called of God. If you're called to be, a, if you're a medical doctor, if you're appointed by God to be a medical doctor, you're called to be a doctor, be an attorney. If you're called to be a, um, a nurse, be, you know, if you could be a real estate investor, you could work on cars, right? You could be a salesperson, whatever it may be. As a child of God, if you're really pursuing that which God has um, created for you to do, then you are, um, that is your, your particular calling. So I'd like for us, I'd like to challenge us to consider the, the term calling and how we sometimes just say this person, oh, God called Chuck Swindoll to serve him or God called Miles Monroe from a young age to serve him. Yes, that's great. But God has also called us, not necessarily to full-time ministry in the traditional sense, but we all have a particular calling. And so let's keep that in mind. I'd like to consider this a divine perspective on your work and mine, a divine perspective on your work and mine. All right, a couple of verses to look at. And Ephesians 2 verse 10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to the good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. The key here is God prepared these works in advance for us to do. So we're not speaking about you know, inventing something and coming up with something. We're saying that there are particular works that God prepared in advance for you and me to do. And if, if it happens to be along the lines of being an entrepreneur, then, then so be it. If it happens to be along the line of moving in a different direction, then so be it as well. But God prepared these works for us to do. And I believe that many of us don't see ourselves as being able to be impactful in, in a particular way, simply because we don't recognize that the script for our life was written and we were predestined for, for certain tasks. And God wants for us to, to, to know, um, know that there's works he's prepared for us to do. We just have to tune in and listen to it, to his instructions and move forward um, consequently. Colossians 3 verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving, God, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That's Colossians 3 verse 17. Okay, and now here, there's a couple of things as I was thinking about all this. And believe me, we're, we're going to go into to, to some meaningful matters in, in a moment. But this here, a divine perspective on your work as we continue. The Apostle Paul, in his, the first epistle and, that we read in the Word of God from the Apostle Paul, says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. That's Romans 1 verse 1. And then the prophet Jeremiah, in, in Jeremiah cha chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. 
as a prophet to the nations. Okay, so those are St. Paul and Jeremiah. But let's really take it to the here and now, to today. So this is you. So you fill in your name here. Blank, your name. A servant of Christ Jesus, called to be a or an, and whatever that might be, and set apart for the gospel of God. You're called to be a, could be a pastor. You're called to be a, an artist. You're called to be a, you know, fill in the blank, a coach. You feel, you're called to be a blank, set apart for the gospel of God. And then, this is the Lord speaking to you, just like with Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a fill in the blank. And so this is some divine perspective on all that we're considering here, here um, tonight. So this is, this is something that I believe it, it gives us a good, good perspective. Now, we're going to continue in a moment. But I want to ask the question. I've, I've asked this question in different contexts, different settings before. But um, do do you know? Do you know? You, I, I, let me share this the screen with you. This, this screen again. Do you know this specifically? Can you, with your knowledge of God and who God has made you, do you know specific the specifics? Of, of course, you know your name, the first part, but do you know what he has set you apart for? Do you know what he appointed you to accomplish? Do you know the specifics, the specific reason for which he created you? Anyone, do you know the specific reason for which he created you? The, the seminars, by the way, are, it's, it's mostly yeah, teaching, but it's not, it's, not, it's not really so much a discussion but I'd like to make it uh, somewhat interactive, right? So do you know the, spe the specifics? And, and I hope that's not too complicated of a question. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna proceed, I'm gonna proceed, I'm gonna proceed. All right, okay. Entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is, oops, just a second. Let me share my screen, pardon me. Look at some, some definitions. An entrepreneur, a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risks in order to do so, right? That's an entrepreneur. And the concept of entrepreneurship is the activity of setting up a business or businesses taking on financial risks and the hope of profit. Those are the, um, some, uh, a couple of, of definitions, right? So entrepreneurship and, and entrepreneur. So you can, you can um, they're full-time entrepreneurs, people who that's what they do. They only work, they work solely for themselves. They have no, no business other than, and they don't, they don't have a, a job in, in a traditional sense. They just um, take on, they do these these particular tasks, um, you know, running a business. Okay, here's a question: Do you have the entrepreneur gene? Do you have the entrepreneur gene? And there's a question. And you know, years ago, years ago, if this question would have been asked of me, I'd be like, "Are you? Oh, psh, please! That's the last thing. It's the last thing I would even consider in a in a, in a heartbeat." But these are some things that have, have been forced to ponder as life has proceeded and things have gone on. The first one is this. Do you have thoughts and ideas about starting a business where you can serve God with your talents? Hmm. That's the first question. Quest next question. Do you feel restless fitting into someone else's vision while you know that God is prompting you to pursue your own vision, right? If you have a job 
typically the the boss or the company may have a particular vision and they need different role players to step in and and, and play their role and you just happen to be one of the role players and if it coincides with your desires for yourself then great wonderful but sometimes there is like a, a conflict and the the you guys kind of you know go go it's like going head to head so after a time it becomes more of a challenge um to you know fit into someone else's vision when within deep within you're being challenged by god to pursue your own vision the next one do you find that given the right opportunity and resources you could establish a business that makes a positive impact on society given the right opportunity and the resources you can establish a business that makes a positive it makes a great positive impact on society and the last one to ponder is do you believe that god wants you to serve him in a capacity where he is your only boss this this isn't the be all and end all but these are some questions that i believe that a, some a christian entrepreneur would look at this and, and 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 check yes 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 to each of these right i'm not challenging anyone to quit your job and just go out there on your own tomorrow but sometimes i think there's some some purpose deep within us calling us calling us to say there's more to you than meets the eye there's more to you than just doing what everyone else um, say you're to do and this is not for the for the faint of heart this concept is not for the faint of heart because you know statistically um over 70 percent of small businesses within the first two years are going to fail within the first two years over 70 percent of small businesses fail but at the same time the business that i believe is breathed by god directed by god it has no choice but to have 100 percent um, likelihood of success and i believe that many of us have been called by god to you know, move in this capacity but we just may not you know because of a variety of reasons maybe maybe there's lack of self-confidence lack of you know contacts connections etc and i believe that through this through this um, session this evening we will be uh, be challenged to hopefully move in, in in that particular area okay so if the answer to each of those questions before was yes then aha you just might be an entrepreneur you just find be an entrepreneur so maybe you could be be have this all this talent and this skill and everything and you're masquerading in a sense as an employee when god has called you to be the boss the visionary of a multinational um multi-million dollar organization and this this is again tonight is just to help challenge you and, and to consider all that this might entail okay so tonight what i want to talk do is look at is uh, steps to take to establish your business steps to take to establish your business and listen i i'm happy to talk for the entire time i i really am but i also want to know that what is being shared it's making a positive impact right and so i don't want to talk over your head i don't want to talk too simple i don't want to talk too fast or too slow so this can be perfect, can be wonderful if we're on the same on the same page. Otherwise, I'll just proceed with the PowerPoint as I have it and and you know and hope it, it sticks, hope it makes a connection. So if you have questions, feel free to use the chat, feel free to ask as we go along. Okay, six to take establish your business. Now there are, are 10 steps that um, I've, I mean, I, there could be 30 steps really. Well, there are 10 that I believe are that you know God would have for us to reflect on tonight and to 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 ponder um, what this this entire process uh, entails. All right. There are 10, 10 steps. Okay. The first one is pray 
and seek God's guidance. All right? Praying seek God's Now, that, this should be, you know, as, as believers, we should know that, you know, prayer is the be beginning of everything, right? Pray without ceasing, the, the Apostle Paul, Paul um, says we should do. So we don't just, you know, get up and get married. No, we have to seek the Lord for our a, a, a mate, seek the Lord for our life partner. And once we we do that, and he gives the directive to say, yes, he is that partner. Uh, he, he's the husband, she's the wife. Then you, you move forward, right? You don't just get up one day and start a business. You see the Lord, right? And maybe some of us are called to, to, uh, to this, this area. And maybe some of us are not. But I believe that very, very often we don't really even consider and contemplate all of this and what it might entail. So the first step is to pray and seek God's guidance. If you need to be like a Gideon and set your fleece and, and get some, you know, you know, ask him for a sign and then, then, then do so and believe that he will respond, right? So the first one is to pray and to seek his guidance. The second is brainstorm business ideas. Brainstorm business ideas. Download data from your head. Download data from your head. Now, on this particular point, it may seem silly, it may seem simple, but on this particular point, I wanna challenge you and me, I wanna challenge us, collectively to really consider, really contemplate all that this might entail. There are different thoughts, different ideas that, that, we, that we have, and especially if, we're, if God is really you know, signaling things to us. There are some of us, he may give the, the thought or the idea to open a business, and that's the one business that we should open, and that's it. And it's great, that's wonderful. But then there, there may be those to whom he gives a vision to open 20 different businesses. And these businesses may not have anything to do with each other. So over on the one hand, you could have a real estate investment business. And then over here, you, you have a, a, um, a franchise, you know, like the, I don't know, a McDonald's franchise. Over on the other hand, you could have something that seems so contrary to everything else. And so the good thing about brainstorming is this. There's no restrictions to it. These are just thoughts that are in your head. The thoughts in your head, it's good to get them out of your head on paper, whether it be written down or in a computer. Just download these thoughts from your head. And what this does, it kind of, helps you to kind of get started. I remember years ago when I uh, was, a, was a, a budding writer, I took a, 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 a course and one of the things they say is that as you're writing, there's a, there's a concept called, there's a term called writer's block. If you have writer's block, what they say you should do is kind of take a step back. And after you take a step back, you just come and just write down just download stuff that's in your head. Just download stuff in your head. And with the downloading of stuff in your head, what you do, you, you, take, you step away from it. And then you come back to it and look. And what, what happens is that the, 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 the block that was in your head, it's kind of like a, a dam, if you will. And the, and it, the water is, is stopped. But once it, the dam breaks, it just poof, it just opens up. And then the floodgates open, literally. And so that, that's, that's something that I think we can do as it relates to, um, as it relates to this, this particular area. So just download business ideas, just uh, download them uh, from, from your head and get them onto, onto paper. The third is have an honest self-assessment of where you are today, right? Have an honest self-assessment. Because you may have a thought, you may have an idea. But I believe it was Shakespeare who, who said, to thine own self be true. 
just be honest with yourself. Say, and you know, and sometimes this can be a painful process because I think sometimes as life goes on, we may feel that we should be further along on our journey than we are in a particular moment. And we just kind of feel like, man, you know, I just turned, you know, 45 years old. And, you know, I, by now I should have done, you know, X, Y, or Z. By now I should have completed that degree. By now I should have owned a house. By now I should have. And it's kind of difficult. And sometimes we, we get down on ourselves. And as a result of feeling that we should have been further ahead on our journey, we just end up being being somewhat um i don't know it, it's like we, you, we we have a we have a negative um, self-image but this whole goal is to help us to kind of see where we are right so do uh, have it on the self-assessment and see see, see where, where we are today and then after that consider the ideal business that you would like to pursue Consider the ideal business that you that you may uh, want to pursue. Now, there are. I would never tell anyone what to do. And other than to say, I believe you should um, pursue something that is that's that's in your in, in your in your heart to do. Psalm thirty-seven, verse four. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of, of your heart. Take delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, consider the ideal business to pursue. A couple of things. You know, God is faithful, because this evening as I was driving home, I listened, to, every, every so often I listened to, to Chuck Swindoll. I've listened to Chuck Swindoll for on and off for the past 30 plus years. I remember early in my um, in my career listening to Chuck Sun. I lived in Texas at the time and, and he was uh, the pastor at a church in Dallas, Texas. I believe he still is the pastor at the church in Dallas, Texas. And so I was listening to him this evening, and he was he was literally speaking about people going to seminars and success success seminars and what success and what they those seminars entail and one of the things that he he said it reminded me of something that i said years ago he was speaking about um seeking fulfill, fulfill fulfillment in life seeking fulfillment in life if i were to ask and i'm not gonna i'm gonna listen if you guys want want us want us um share thoughts then please do so but i'm not gonna ask any more questions <laughs> Because but most of the, cam the cameras are off, uh, ask questions, I will get no answers. So I'm just going to keep keep on going. If you have questions, then please raise your hand or, you know, put something in, in the chat. But I'm just going to proceed. And unless I hear otherwise, I'm going to assume that it's making the, the connection. Anyway, what he was saying, is, what Chuck Sindal was saying see, is that this this pursuit of, of ful fulfillment is a is a good pursuit. And there's a quote that I, I came up with years ago. I said, seek fulfillment, not fortune. Seek fulfillment, not fortune. Because in the pursuit of fulfillment, you may find fortune. But in the per pursuit of fortune, you rarely find fulfillment. Right? Seek fulfillment, not fortune. Fulfillment, there's something to be said for the person who does on a day-to-day -day basis that which <clears throat> they were created by God himself to do. There's something to be said for that. And many, many a time, as individuals, we just kind of go with the flow and go as everyone else um, wants, wants for us to go. And we kind of you can't, can't go, go through the motion. If you were to win the lottery tomorrow, right? I don't know how, how many lottery players we have among us. I'm not telling anyone to go play the lottery. But if you were to win, let's say, forget the lottery. Let's say you came up on some money. Let's say, you know, a, a rich 
family member um, has, you know, you know, older, rich older family member has passed on and has left you millions of dollars in his or her will. And because of the, the, the money left in the will, you see that, wow, you're really set for life. Uh, would you continue to work, go to work on a day-to-day -day basis? Or will you quit that job and go do something that you really want to do, right? What, what does that look like, right? So seek, seeking fulfillment is really about that which satisfies you, that which you see some purpose in it. And as a believer, it's not simply to say, I love doing something, it's to say, that Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 comes alive in me when I do this particular task. Let, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And so uh, the challenge to us is in, you know, coming, you know, this, having these different thoughts and ideas is to seek fulfillment, seek something that which um, is, is meaningful to you and is, is, uh, is something intangible. And in the program I was listening to today, there was this lady was, he, he was, Chuck Swindoll was speaking of a lady who said that there is just something, I forgot what she, I think she was in, some, I forgot what it was that she did, but she, she was like, uh, she would be on stage and do some presentations. And she, she spoke of the impact of, on her of seeing the faces light up when people kind of get it, when people get it. And because, so once they, get what she's what she's she's saying then they can embrace it and move move forward, move onward so seeking fulfillment is i believe is a great great pursuit right so that's the first the first four points i want to to, to share this right so these are the, the initial steps to take okay what biz, what bright business ideas do you have in mind? What about business ideas do you have in mind? You don't have to speak it on uh, aloud to us right now. But I believe that for many of us, there's something, you know, as we, you, you, you just live in your everyday society, there's something that is within you, within me, that it's not ordinary. People may have thoughts, people may have ideas about different things, but there's something, something unique based on what you know, based on your experience, based on your contacts, based on a number of things. You, there's different thoughts, ideas you may have. Doesn't necessarily need to, need to be something that's never ever been done before. Maybe a challenge for you is, um, is, is uh, I mentioned real estate before, maybe a challenge for you is to learn to make money in, in, in real estate, you know, buying and selling of real estate. Maybe that's, that's one thing. And so maybe you could start an entity where you're, you, you're a real estate investor, right? Maybe it could be to, you know, especially with, with technology today, maybe you could, you could buy and sell things on the internet, right? Maybe you have, you know, you know, contacts in, in different countries. You could have an import export and you could be a, a wholesaler, just different ideas. Or maybe it could be something where that you, you do something that you, with your hands, that you, you're, you're highly skilled. And you could say, well, if I can monetize this, then it would be, it, it could be amazing. And this is, these are just things to, spur us on and to challenge us and if you, if there's some thoughts and ideas that you have then i would encourage and challenge you to embrace those and then to to, to go go to god uh, regarding them because i believe that there's something great within you that he he wants to unlock All right okay begin writing after having done all this to this point begin writing now, this is a different level of writing. The, the, the first writing that we looked at was just a data dump, if you will, right? The data download, just to get it, a lot of these things out of, 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 of your head. But then um, set goals, 
with your business, right? Set goals. Set set smart goals. Smart goals. Okay. I last session, last seminar we had, we spoke about smart goals. I'm gonna come back to smart goals in a bit. Uh, because you know, setting smart goals is is so it's so essential. You may have heard me say if you were at the last session where I said goals serve as a magnet to success. Goals serve as a magnet to success. Okay, I'm gonna come, come back to the acronym SMART goals in a moment. And after you set the SMART goals, then you design an action plan. Set SMART goals and the design an action plan. Okay, now having set, when you, when you set goals, goals, as I mentioned, are they, they function as a magnet to success. What are you looking to accomplish, right? The, Proverbs 29, verse 18. <clears throat> Where there's no vision, the people perish. Just give me a moment. <clears throat> Proverbs 29. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Habakkuk 2, verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. So write the vision. What is, what is it that you see, right? What is it that you see? So you write, write it down, set goals, what you'd like to accomplish over a given period of time. Okay, so let's look at SMART goals and what that entails. SMART goals, S and A R T. Specific, S, specific. Do, for this, there are do's and don'ts. Do, set, uh, real numbers with real deadlines. Don't say, you know, I want more visitors, right? So as it relates to, you know, you're starting a business, just be, be, be specific. Say what type of business you would want, what type of customers you would look to serve, what's the geographic location, you know, is it something that is internet-based? Is it like a brick and, brick and mortar? Is your contact primarily with um, customers over the phone or customers in person, meeting via Zoom, et cetera, specific? So, so as a friend of mine said, you have to be specific to be terrific. So specific. M, measurable. Do I said, do make sure your goal is trackable. And don't and don't hide behind buzzwords like brand engagement or social influence, et cetera, et cetera. And as Christians, I will say, don't hide behind words like God's will. Oh, that sounds so sacrilegious. That sounds so sacrilegious. But measurable. You have to to be, it, you have to be able to put something out there so that when you come back to it in a year, you could say, okay, how did I, what, what, what progress did I make in this particular area? Specific, measurable. So don't say something in general, like I, I, um, I want to, I want to be, be used of God to touch many lives. You know, as believers, we all want to be used of God to touch many lives. What does that look like in specific terms? Attainable is A. Work towards a goal that is challenging but possible. Don't try to take over the world in one night, right? I think A and R kind of go hand in hand, attainable and then realistic. Realistic is for R, R for realistic. Be honest with yourself. You know what you and your team are capable of, and don't forget any don't forget any hurdles that you may have to overcome. So these two are just saying you set goals and see what what the what the goals might 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 look like, but try to set goals that are. I, I've heard someone say you should set goals that are 
a bit out of reach, but not out of sight, knowing that you'd have to do something really extraordinary to accomplish them. But goals, they serve as a magnet to success. And then T, time bound. Give yourself a deadline, all right? Uh, do give yourself a deadline. Keep pushing towards a goal. Uh, don't, don't say here, say, don't, don't keep pushing towards a goal you might hit, quote unquote, someday, right? Say, I remember for years, I had this thought about if I could, if I could just make $50,000. Wow, early in my career, if I could just make $50,000 a year, $50,000 a year. And what I realized is that once I made $50,000, it was like, then what? And for, literally for a number of years after that, I was like a lost sheep because I didn't have anything beyond that, that $50,000 a year. And so, so I started to put on paper some, and it's not even just all about money, but certain specifics, right? Certain specifics and put time frame to them. And, you know, when I'm setting goals, I like to, I like to think, there's a term I use called thinking backwards. Some people, years after, I, it's just a term I came, came up for myself, when I came up with for myself when I was in college, thinking backwards. It's years later that I learned that in the professional world, they call it reverse engineering, right? Reverse engineering. Say, think about something that you want to, say, let's say you're, you know, 30 years old and you, you want to retire at age, at age 70. So you kind of look at your ideal life at age 70 and make, make that a fixture. The geographic location which you, in which you want to live, the, the, the different things that you, you might, uh, might want to do, just be specific and then work your way backwards. Some call it reverse engineering, I call it thinking backwards. You look at a given thing at some point in the future and then work your way back to today. So this is just smart goals just in general. But now, if you look at business and what, what business entails, business success entails, so what, what smart goals could there be for business? Well, smart goal could be, I want to be, the I want to be the number you know the number one. Let's say if you're if you're here in South Florida where, where we are, I want to be the number one fill in the blank company in my city, right? You know by by the by December of 2020, 2025, you know. And so what what was what would that entail? All right, and and how would you be able to measure measure that? Right, so, or maybe you want to, one of your goals is to dominate the whole Southeast United States in a particular area, particular field, what that might entail. So it, there's a number of, of things, you know, with, 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 with smart goals that I believe can be very meaningful um, to, to many of us, right? So do not overlook, do not, do not underestimate SMART goals. I remember for myself going through college and I came upon many an obstacle and you know, I won't tell you my whole life story, but I had many a challenge with my education and, and so on. I won't go into the fullness of this, but I just out of desperation came upon and stumbled upon this whole thing regarding goal setting stumbled upon it and I kind of said, started to just set really wild and crazy seemingly unrealistic goals for myself but I wrote them down and I believed them and I then after writing down the goals you, you, we, we saw on the this this the um let me go back to that slide after writing down the goal then you design an action plan, right? Design an action plan. An action plan is simply step by step, step by step um, things that you, you do to, to make each of those goals a reality, step by step. So if you want to dominate your particular field, 
then maybe in dominate in seeking to, to dominate that particular field, maybe what you do is you get to know who the different players are in that field, right? You do networking, you um, interact with people, you you become someone's someone's apprentice, someone who's years ahead of you, someone who's more experienced than you. You interact with that person and ask how how did you get to where you are, right? And you just said, you know, can I be be your be your apprentice? Can you share with me what you know? And people, what I found, you know, there's, there's an expression: the best things in life are free. One of the things I found is that people are are very often willing to share with you their success story, right? They're very willing to very often willing to share with you their success story and how you can do likewise in your own particular area, right? So I think this this is this is essential. I believe this is this is very important. Okay. Now the my intent with this session was to kind of like spur us on to, to you know, kind of get get the our juices flowing if you will get our, our our thought process going right now there's a there's a next area that i wasn't planning to go into tonight i can go into it i'm prepared to go into it but i don't want to overwhelm it um does, does anyone at this point have any questions for me does anyone have any questions or any, any thoughts that you'd like to share at this point Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to skip down to something else now, right? Give me a second here. I just want to. All right, so here, here in the, I'm, I'm going to speak about, this is like, okay, I'm going to speak about business organization, right? The, the, the type of, of business organization uh, structure that you might want to create. And we talked to, to a certain degree, we talked about this when we, when we looked at, um, when, when we did the, this, when we did the second session on taxes some time ago, but I want to challenge us to begin thinking as business people, um, different different thoughts and ideas relating to 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 be, you know to how to organize your your business organization, how to set up your business organization. So give me a second while I queue this up, and you know, different types of of businesses to establish. All right. Now this is. It's a bit, it's a, it's a lot of info, but I wasn't gonna go into it tonight because I didn't wanna overwhelm us, but I'm gonna, if no one has any questions, I'm just gonna proceed with this as, as we have it. Just a second here. All right, hold on. Okay. You're choosing your type of business organization. Actually, hold on a second. Give me a second. I want to do. Hold on. Okay. Choosing your type of business organization. All right, here we go. Oops. Okay, choosing a type of business organization. Now, in the if you have a an idea to start start a business, you know, I, I, I actually before I, before I share, I want to say something. A lot of the times, 
but you talk about, you know, you know, start a business, start a business. And you think about what the traditional start a business might look like. But if you consider this, you know, the, ex the, the expression, there's, there's no business like show business, right? If you're going to be an, a, a, an entertainer in Hollywood, guess what? You have a business. If you're going to be a professional athlete, you have a business because the business is your, yourself, right? If you're selling you know, your athletic skills or your acting skills or whatever it might be, very often people who are successful in, in, in a physical sense are very unsuccessful otherwise, you know, from a business uh, standpoint. And because they're not, not successful from a business standpoint, that ultimately negatively impacts their, their overall success. You may recall the, the singing group TLC, right? TLC, there were, I don't know if they still are, but I know in, they were very popular in the early to mid, I think in mid to late 90s, TLC. You know, they would sing um, like, don't go chasing waterfalls. I don't know if you remember that song. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Anyway, so TLC, they were, they were very successful. They had a number of hit songs and they were on the radio. They were kind of like in the whole, the whole hip hop. They, they were singers, but they were in the whole hip hop scene, right? They were very successful. I had an, a, a series of hits. But one of their undoings was the, what the business aspect of their organization was such that it was it, it's, it's a big part of their whole undoing as a group. So certain you know, contracts signed, because one of the things you may not realize is that a lot of times you see these singers on stage and they're popular and they're touring the world and you hear their name on the radio, you see, you see them on the internet in some music video and they're the face. And you're just like, wow, ooh, wow, it's wonderful. Every time a song plays on the radio or there's a new download on iTunes, somebody's getting paid. So don't just think it's, it's oh, that's so, such a beautiful song. Somebody's getting paid. And so the, the contracts behind these, uh, behind the, uh, these, these individuals or these groups, the contracts are so essential because if you if the contracts aren't done, you know, with the right eyes, if you if you don't have a, a good attorney to see it to, to 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 read it through, if you don't have a number of things in place, then what could happen is that you could be the most popular singer, who literally has nothing to show for it, because who gets paid? The writer of the song gets paid, the producer of the song gets paid. The record company gets paid, and you as an artist, you also get paid. And so if you don't ensure that certain things are in place as a recording artist, you could be, you know, have a 10, 10, 10 number one songs in a row. And all you have is the knowledge that you have 10 number one songs in a row. You have nothing to show for it. And so TLC, part of their undoing was that they, they were bad business people. And that was a key to their undoing. On the flip side, you may have heard the name Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, um, I, I, there's certain things I've learned about him over time. And the more I learn about him, the more I say how astute a business man he is. Whenever you see anyone wearing Air Jordan shoes, or a shirt with the, the Jordan logo on it, the, the jump man, they call it, that can be like flying through the air to basketball. Whenever you see any article of clothing, a t-shirt or whatever it might be, whenever, sometimes you see professional athletes wearing them. Whenever you see one, if, if, the, if you paid 
you know, one twenty nine ninety nine. There's a certain percentage of what you paid that goes directly to Michael Jordan. Do you know that? So Michael Jordan, each year, I I, I heard it was it's, like, it's a ridiculous number. I know over over the years he has made over four hundred million dollars, over four hundred million dollars from his relationship with Nike because of the contract, unconventional contract when he signed it. He hadn't even played his, played his first professional basketball game yet, but he signed a contract with Nike. That to say, every Air Jordan shoe that is sold, there, there's a particular percentage that shall go to him as a result. Anyway, so what I'm saying through this is having a good business acumen is a very big key to success. Michael Jordan is a very successful athlete on the court, but he is probably a better businessman than he is an athlete. He's one of the few professional athletes that has gone on to become a billionaire, and he's a multi-billionaire as a result of his business, business acumen. I'm not chasing money and saying we should be you know, rich and famous like these persons. But what I'm saying to us is that as believers, the word of God tell, tells us that the, wor the world is his, the earth is his and everything in it, all right? So it all belongs to God. So at best, Michael Jordan or whomever, at best, um, we are temporary stewards over God's possessions because at some point we're gonna die and leave them all. So choosing your business organization type is very important so if you have this idea, if you have this thought, this idea about starting a business and being and you know successfully establishing that business, how you do what you do is very important. If, for instance, if you if you you know if you have a job, you get a W two, they withhold taxes, and you would think, hey, I get this contract with the company where they don't hold, they don't withhold taxes, they pay all the money to me. That's great. That's wonderful. But if you don't really know how to handle that or how, how to do it in the right business structure, that money that from which they don't withhold taxes, that money is going to cost you so much more than you would have paid when they were holding, when they, when they were withholding taxes from you. Okay. All right. Your business organization type. The most popular types of business or, or organization, organization structures, really. Sole proprietorship, C corporation, S corporation, partnership, and LLC, limited liability company. Right? Um, have, you, have we heard of, all, of each of these types of entities? I'm assuming, at least here in the United States. Sole proprietorship, C corporation, S corporation, partnership, limited liability company, LLC. Sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship is really, let's say if you have, let's say if you want to wash cars in your neighborhood, <clears throat> just because. Wash cars. Congratulations, you have a sole proprietorship. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't have to register to form a sole proprietorship. You you can just just by the fact that you have a business where you get just by the fact that you you, you have something where, whereby you get paid, you have a sole proprietorship. There's no registration that you have to do to have a sole proprietorship, right? It is uh, what they call uh, um. It, when you're self-employed, this is the easiest form of being self-employed. There's no business that you have to register as a result of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So proprietorship, easy to form. They do not require a federal or state registration to start. Just easy to form. 
disadvantages, unlimited liability. If you have a sole proprietorship, if there's any issues that might arise legally, then as a sole proprietor, you have unlimited liability. It means that your personal assets could become at risk as a result of your sole, sole proprietorship. Self-employment, potentially high self-employment tax. Self-employment tax is, is a tax that you pay. You know, like, well, here in the United States, you have Social Security and Medicare. Self-employment tax is Social Security and Medicare for the, um, for the self-employed. Now, when you have a company, so if you have a company that you work for, they withhold Social Security and Medicare whenever you get paid, right? So you may get your, your gross pay. Your gross pay might be um, $1,000. But when you get paid, you get paid $825. That's because there's a certain percentage, 6.2% for Social Security, 1.45% for Medicare, and then federal income tax withheld. And so you get the net amount paid paid to you. That's when you have a job. Your employer also matches your social security as well as your Medicare. And so whenever you get paid with help from you is 6.2 for social security, your employer matches 6.2 for social security. With help from you is 1.45% for Medicare. Your employer also matches 1.45% for Medicare. When you're self-employed, congratulations, you're the employee as well as the employer. So you pay both Social Security and Medicare for employee and employer. So rather than 6.2%, you're paying for Social Security, you're paying 12.4 Social Security and Medicare. Likewise, excuse me, Social Security is is 12.4. Medicare, 1.45% is, um, but then as employee, employer is 2.9%, right? So, so 1.45 times two. So, so, so proprietorship is very, it can be very, um, potentially high, high self employment tax. Okay. C corporation. If you form a corporation, for-profit corporation, it's automatically a C corporation, right? A C corporation is simply an entity, is a corporation that um, it's, you know, you, you file the articles of incorporation with your state, whether it be, you know, state of Florida, state of New York, state of Texas, you file a C corporation. Advantage is that it's a separate legal entity from you, the sole proprietor, right? From you, the, from you, the individual. It's a separately recognized legal entity. Just like how you have a social security number, the, the C corporation has an, an EIN, employer, employer identification number, right? You have limited liability. You're potentially liable only to the only to the assets of the company. In other words, your personal assets are not um, at risk, generally speaking, when you have a C corporation. You have a flat tax rate. Your net income, if if your net income for the entire year is one hundred thousand dollars, then your flat tax for the C corporation is. $21,000, it's a flat tax rate. Um, on your personal taxes, I mean, you can the highest tax you can have is potentially up to 37%, but for C corporation, flat tax is 21%. Disadvantages of a C corporation, double taxation, meaning that the, the company, it pays taxes, pays income taxes, and, and the shareholders pay income taxes on the dividends that they earn as well. Another disadvantage is 
is state income tax. Like here in the state of Florida, as a C corporation has state income tax. So in addition to federal taxes, the state, uh, the, the, there's state income taxes as well. All right. S corporation. S corporation is an entity, just like a corp just like a C corporation. It has limited liability. It's a separate legal entity. It has limited liability. But the advantage is that it's a tax conduit. Tax conduit. What does that mean? It means that the entity itself does not pay income taxes, but the taxes flow through the company and are taxed by the on, on the owner's tax return. Um, I think when when I've done this before, one of the things that the example that I've used is that you have like right now many of us are connected to a laptop or an iPad or some or a desktop, right? The there is the computer or the the, the device. And then there is the outlet from the wall. The cord that is is that connects the computer to the the outlet, the outlet to the computer. The cord, the, that cord in and of itself has no power, but the but the cord is a conduit through which the power flows to the computer. Power from the outlet to the computer, right? So there's no power in the court in and of, the court in and of itself. The same way an S corporation is a type of entity where it's a tax conduit. It's not taxed itself, but the income flows through the entity and goes on the owner's personal tax return. So the income tax for S corporation, um, at least from a federal standpoint, is gonna be zero because there's zero income tax. The owners pay income taxes, but the S corporation, whether they make $5 or $5 million, there's no income tax from, you know, from a federal tax standpoint. QBI deduction for the purpose of this, this discussion tonight, I won't go into the QBI deduction. It's a little bit involved. It's something something that came came out of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017. I will kind of leave that alone. Disadvantage of S corporation limited number of shareholders, and all the shareholders must be U.S. citizens or residents. So if you have an overseas owner or co-owner they cannot have an S corporation. An S corporation must be by a US citizen or resident. Okay. Any questions? All right. Um, I'm not gonna go through this these other two forms of business and then we'll, i think we could put the wrap it up from there partnership advantage like the s corporation like a partnership is a tax conduit um Advantages as the greatest source of capital compared to sole, sole, sole proprietor, um, um, sole proprietorship. The partnership you have, you know, more than one individual who is you know join join in the partnership, so you have potentially more more um, more in the investments in, into the entity. Disadvantage, unlimited liability, doesn't have the protection that a C corporation or S corporation has. And then the liability is each partner is jointly and severely liable for the partnership's debts, meaning that 
well, whenever the, the partnership has has um, the partnership has debts, that whether or not you as a partner consented to certain of the debts being incurred, then you are jointly along with everybody else, all the other partners, you're 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 on the hook for the debts of the of the partnership. Oops. And then the same issue we talk about the self-employment tax. If uh, it's uh, it can have a high self-employment tax as well, just as with the um, sole proprietorship. And the final one that we will look at is LLC, limited liability company. Advantage is also a tax conduit. Has limited liability. Disadvantage is an LLC, a disregard, a single member LLC is a disregard entity for tax purposes and thus may have a high self employment tax. That's a bit of a mouthful, which I don't want to. If you have any questions about that, just, just, just let me know. But it's, I could explain it, but it's, it's may be, would be somewhat confusing. But just know that a single member LLC, meaning that there's an LLC owned by one person, you could run into the, the issue before of the high self-employment tax. Some states like California additional um, assess an additional fee just for owning and operating an LLC. The state of California, for instance, I believe that each year an LLC that, that does business in California each year, they um, their fee they have to pay like a minimum eight hundred dollar fee just for having a California LLC. It's just it's just ridiculous, all right. So those those are the those are the main thing I wanted wanted to to touch on um, with with you regarding regarding all of this, all right? Now. There, I know there's a number of things that we looked at tonight, but the big takeaway that I would like for you to have is, is this. As, a, as an individual, you may have different thoughts and ideas about potentially starting a business. And as a believer, I, I, this, the purpose of this, this session tonight was just to encourage and empower you with information so that if you have the desire to start a business that you would just, you know, you'd be empowered with this information. So pray and seek God's guidance, you know, brainstorm, you download data, have an assessment of where you are today, consider business you would like to pursue ideally, right? And then begin writing, set smart goals, design an action plan, and and those are the, the smart goals. And those are the main issues I wanted to, to wanted for us to touch, for us to look at. Okay, so that's what I have prepared for us um, to, to, to touch on um, touch on uh, tonight. Now, any questions? Any questions? Okay. One thing I've I've noted that that there's there are times where, um, you know, in a public setting, particularly because this is, well, because this is public, there's sometimes there's sometimes those who may not really want to ask certain questions in, in here, but afterwards. Where we have contact and we have you know one on one sessions and what I like to do is is be available to have you know some uh, one on one sessions and so if you would like to talk through any of these matters of what we've discussed tonight then you can we can um, you can book at some some time you know just just you know, just call our church office. And we could put a, a session, the session I've had these on via the telephone or via Zoom 
and I've, I've found it to be very beneficial. Um, well, connecting with, with persons in this capacity, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more, well, it's, it's certainly confidential having, having these, these sessions. And so if you would like to discuss any of what we've spoken about here tonight, then please do reach out and, 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 and connect with us. And I would love to, you know, have a sit down and chat with you about the specifics and just just serve you as as best as I know how. Now this this information, it's potentially life changing. It is, um, it, it, I think some of the times I take take for granted certain things that I have the privilege of knowing, but not knowing many of these things, you know, just kind of sets, sets you back, sets you way back in, in seeking, in, as you may be seeking to establish your, yourself as a company or, or, or as, an, as an individual, right? So just know that we are here to, to help, here to, here to serve you. So do um, feel free to connect with us uh, in this capacity. Now, I, I would also I'd like to in, invite you. We have um, a second. If you're here in South Florida, or if you if you if you plan to visit here in time soon, next month on Saturday, August twelfth, we have a, a a picnic in the park. It's like a back to school event. Right, it's uh, in in Coconut Creek, um, in in nor northern Broward County. There's more information to be shared as we go along, but that that's the if you save a date. So it's uh, a, a little over a month from now, in uh, on Saturday, August twelfth. We have a twenty-four hour prayer line. It's the same number you saw before, but anytime twenty-four-seven. If you have a, a particular prayer need, we'd be happy to take your needs and your, your concerns um, to God in prayer. If you have a friend or loved one, or if you yourself are going through a season of grief, our church has a grief share support group. We did not meet this past, um, this past Monday on July 3rd, but Mondays throughout, until the month of September, we're meeting, uh, we have a grief share a group to help you know, persons going through the process of grieving so you can reach out and if you, if you have any questions in on, on that um as well to help you in this process all right and here's our social media contacts contact um, information so you can you connect with us on facebook youtube instagram twitter tiktok all right and thank you for joining us um i i do hope that this was um this was valuable information to you and that you, you you can you know put it to good use in your particular area um as i mentioned you feel free to contact if you want to book a session to, to discuss um, your particular situation or if maybe you have this 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 zeal this desire to start a business start a company and you, you're not really sure of what steps to take we can certainly help you um through through this process as well right so thank you for joining us this, this evening. And I pray that this has been, been a blessing to you, All right? And so I'm just gonna close in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Father, thank you for um, just being with us here, here uh, this evening. And I pray that this, what we've spoken about has been pleasing to you. I pray that it's given us some insight as to how we can go about um, go about our, um, our 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 daily lives in terms of success and, and and what it entails in terms of the areas of business. But I know it, there's there's um, many of us have the desires to do different things for you, but we may not have the know-how. I pray that tonight there was some know-how. Um, shared among us so that we can 
we can collectively embrace it and just uh, just have you have you um give us insight as to how we can take this this this, this approach father we love you with all of our hearts we praise you for for what you've done um, tonight and i pray that in all things you'll be honored and glorified through us your prayers as we look to you and pray same time in the name of jesus amen amen yeah. all right all right everyone so thank you again for joining us and have our best our best rest of your night and we shall in touch okay god bless okay bye, bye. Good night.